The pandemic has made it a tough year for charity events. In previous Septembers, this has been one of the biggest, the Terry Fox run. 2020 marks 40 years since his Marathon of Hope. An anniversary edition of his iconic shoes sold out in minutes. The Terry Fox run still went ahead virtually. Participants were encouraged to raise money for cancer research their way and post their efforts on social media. More than 25,000 fundraisers in all, chalking up nearly $5 million. For decades after his run ended, this country remains fiercely proud of Terry Fox. He defined perseverance and hope for a generation of Canadians. Now he's being honoured in a new book. Forever Terry, A Legacy in Letters, is a collection of 40 letters from 40 contributors, reflecting on what he means to us. My name is Marissa Papa Constantino. I'm a first-time Paralympian in track and field for the 100 and 200 meter sprint. My name is Perdita Felician, Olympian, author, broadcaster, and speaker. My name is Daryl Fox, and I'm Terry Fox's younger brother. How long is it going to take you to run across the country? Oh, this September, October, I'll get there. I hope to do between 30 and 40 miles in a day. The moment I realized Terry had captured the imagination of Canadians is actually the very first day I arrived, May 31st, 1980. I had witnessed Terry run over 3,000 miles preparing for the Marathon of Hope, and I could see by his commitment and his determination that I felt, even at the age of 17, he was fulfilling a dream. don't remember a time where Terry Fox was not a part of my memory, part of our fabric as Canadians. I had gone through my year and a half of chemotherapy, the hardest time of my life, when I might have died but I lived, knowing that these people are still there, there's people in the bed right now, and I decided I would try and, and help out those people by raising money and maybe being a motivator for them by doing what I'm doing. That's who he is, and he fought the good fight, and he continues to fight the good fight, even though he's no longer with us. Although he had his own struggles and obstacles to overcome, he managed to persevere and get through them regardless of what he faced. People tell me to quit. I look at it, if you've got a heart and a mind, and you're happy, then why, why change what you're doing? I feel connected to Terry because he was the very first individual that I saw that also happened to be an amputee that really demonstrated power and resilience. I feel that losing my leg has not hindered my life. It's helped me. I'm happier than before. I find things more rewarding than before. As a young girl growing up with a disability, that was huge for my confidence. Lane seven for candidate to Marissa Papa Constantino. And being able to adapt to any situation that came my way. Papa Constantino in third. I always say to people, it's true, you could take my other leg away. And I'd probably be even tougher than I was. I am right now with one. He was an athlete, and I think sometimes that's lost in his story. To even start an ambition like the Marathon of Hope and to run a marathon every single day for thousands and thousands of kilometers, you'd have to, you know, have the mind of an athlete. And so I feel connected to him in that way. The part of Terry that my family and I carry with us every day is that life is short. Um, do not take it for granted. Terry said that he made a mistake uh, in the 18 years before he was diagnosed with cancer, that he was very self-centered. That cancer awakened him to the concept of giving back and helping others. There are 25 million people who live in Canada. Don't tell me that we can't raise $25 million from the public of Canada. See, I gotta set my goals high, because I believe in miracles and I have to. What I learned from Terry was that disability did not mean inability. And just because I had a different challenge growing up than my peers did, did not mean that I wasn't able to achieve anything I set my mind to. What I learned from Terry was, anything is possible if you try, which were Terry's actual words. 
He uh, said before he started the Marathon of Hope, I want to try the impossible to show that it can be done. And that's exactly what Terry did in my mind in 1980. He proved to us all that the limitations we have are self-imposed. And we can do anything if we set our mind and, and, and heart towards a goal. I'm stubborn and competitive. I'm not a quitter. I, I don't like to lose. I don't like people feeling sorry for me. I don't like pity. And I wanted to show these other people what I could do. You know, sometimes we think that we have to be, you know, a millionaire or a politician to make change, to make things happen. But here was Terry Fox, an ordinary Canadian kid who said that I'm not going to wait for somebody else to tackle cancer. I'm going to fight it myself. And Terry did what was in his power to do. He ran. And he ran every day until he couldn't. I've said to people before that I'm going to do my very best to make it. I'm not going to give up. And that's true. But I might not make it. If I don't make it, the marathon of hope better continue. It's got to go without me. I'll do my best, but it's got to keep going without me if I can't make it. And I'd like to think that 39, 40 years later, each of us is going west in Terry's honor and continuing on this marathon of hope. I believe Terry Fox's legacy is resilience and power, and it's been able to carry on with Canadians all throughout Canada. I believe Terry Fox's legacy is that each one of us can make change. We can make a difference. Whatever the causes are, if we start locally, if we start in our own backyards, we might not know where these changes will take us. They might not be as big as the Marathon of Hope, but I don't think that matters. Just pick up something, be passionate about it, and fight for that cause, whatever it is. I believe Terry's legacy is very much alive and very vibrant. I like Terry. It's hard to believe we're now 40 years removed from the Marathon of Hope, but it's as if it was last week that Terry was running because Canadians, Terry Foxers, from east to west, from north to south, are continuing what he started in 1980. And we will not rest until his dream of eradicating cancer once and for all is eliminated.